Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Limited, Mikhail Gordillo circumnavigates the globe in his RV-8, SpaceX plans to fly again this weekend, Boeing and Airbus may face challenges in 2017. I'm Bree Cross, it's January 5th, 2017, and this is Airborne Limited. Superior Air Parts put out a statement congratulating Mikhail Gordillo on being the first to circumnavigate the North and South Poles in a home-built aircraft weighing under 1,750 kilograms, which equates to 3,858 pounds. Gordillo is also the only pilot to ever fly a single-engine aircraft across the continent of Antarctica. Superior Air Parts' Scott Hayes said, quote, This is an amazing and truly historic adventure. We are extremely proud that Mr. Gordillo put his trust in a Superior XP360 engine to power the Vans RV-8 Sky Polaris aircraft he built for this challenging flight. It's reported that during the 10-year construction of the airplane, Gordillo made many modifications to the RV-8, which included a fuel capacity of 192 gallons. The statistics of the trip are impressive. Gordillo traveled 47,475 miles, with the longest leg being 2,942 miles. The flight consisted of visiting 25 different countries over a total flight time of 305 hours. The highest altitude flown was 15,500 feet. Gordillo explained the primary mission for this record-breaking flight was to gather critical data on the buildup of black carbon in the Earth's atmosphere in remote regions of the world. SpaceX plans to return to launch its first satellite since a launch pad explosion in September from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California on January 8th. The announcement of a return to flight comes as SpaceX says it has concluded its investigation into a launch pad accident at Cape Canaveral, Florida on September 1st. Over the past four months, officials at the FAA, the U.S. Air Force, NASA, and the NTSB, along with several industry experts, have collaborated with SpaceX on a rigorous investigation to determine the cause of the anomaly that occurred at Space Launch Complex 40. This investigation team was established according to SpaceX's accident investigation plan as approved by the FAA. As the primary federal licensing body, the FAA provided oversight and coordination for the investigation. In their recent press release, SpaceX described the investigation to great detail and issued the results of their findings. SpaceX also said they greatly appreciate the support of their customers and partners throughout this process and that they look forward to fulfilling their manifest in 2017 and beyond. After the break, the new year may pose challenges for Boeing and Airbus. Explore No Limits Flying in the FAA Certified Sea Ray Amphibious LSA, one of the top three best selling LSAs in the U.S. Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray comes equipped with a Rotax engine and exhibits extraordinary handling on land, water, and in the air. Check it out at www.searay.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro tso airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Limited, Aero TV, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. According to a report in the Financial Times, both Boeing and Airbus may face a challenging year in 2017 after both saw sales slip last year. The report also stated that when the two plane makers release their final reports for sales later this month, the numbers will likely indicate that they fell short of their sales goals for 2016. According to Bob Stallard of Vertical Research Partners, both companies had a goal of replacing every delivery with a new order, but both apparently fell short of that goal, according to the aerospace analyst. Stallard added that he sees airline demand indicators easing and that the industry could be near or past the peak of this upcycle. According to the report, while deliveries are expected to increase in 2017, new orders may slow as carriers adjust to higher oil prices and slower passenger growth. 
The International Air Transport Association projects that traffic growth will slow to 5.1 percent, down from 5.9 percent in 2016. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero Community Update, highlighting news and information about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative behind Airborne Unlimited. One of our partners that we've been working with since before we officially formalized what we call our Airborne Partnership Initiative is the Sebring U.S. Sport Aviation Expo that takes place this year on January 25th through the 28th in Sebring, Florida. This is the show where the sky isn't the limit, it's the beginning. It features light sport aircraft, home-built aircraft, ultralights, and other recreational aircraft. The aircraft you'll see at the Sport Aviation Expo run the gamut of all aircraft that fit into the definition of recreational aviation. However, that doesn't mean you won't see some of the high-end stuff that we all like to look at. You'll also see a plethora of vendors featuring about everything the recreational flyer could be interested in. Our a and crew will be returning from covering events in California just in time to spend a little more time in the sun at the Sport Aviation Expo. If you can't join us at the Expo, you can follow our reports in Aero News and through our Airborne Unlimited broadcasts. And by the way, stand by for all the news that's coming from California. Many have said one of the best features of the Expo is that it provides an easy way to see all these recreational aircraft in one location at one time and be able to fly them by simply taxiing away from the Expo display ramp. More than just a show and tell, this is a show, tell, and fly event. Dodge the winter weather and get an early start with recreational flying this year in Sebring. After these messages, the NTSB may investigate an airline crash that occurred 32 years ago. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. And now Laura's going to take us around the patch. Thanks, Bree. The NTSB is working to acquire a data recorder thought to be from the Eastern Airlines Flight 980 that was discovered by a pair of climbers from Mount Iamani in Bolivia. The aircraft crashed in January 1985, but the site was never fully investigated. EAA members are invited to submit their best ideas for the 2017 Founders Innovation Prize competition, sponsored by the EAA. The second annual competition again welcomes ideas to counter loss of control accidents in amateur built aircraft. Entries are accepted through June 15th. German mapping company Germap has introduced a new purpose built drone for its use in business. The G 170V is a vertical takeoff and landing fixed wing airplane UAV that could be better described as a quadplane. FlyersRight.org and Travelers United have joined forces with an aggrieved airline passenger whose personal injury claim was denied by a federal appeals court. The issue was exceeding the statute of limitations for the original filing, and FlyersRight.org is taking the case to the U.S. Supreme Court. Most of the assembly line workers at the Lockheed Martin facility in Fort Worth, Texas, working on the F-35 program, started an increased hourly work schedule on January 2nd. The new schedule is in line with the plans to ramp up full production of the F-35. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Back to you, Bree. Thanks, Laura. Garmin has announced its successor to the G1000 integrated flight deck, which is the G1000 and XI. Garmin says it's a modernized flight display design with significant performance enhancements. They say the G1000 NXI incorporates innovative capabilities into a state-of-the-art avionics platform. Some of the features include wireless cockpit connectivity, including wireless aviation database updates using Garmin FlightStream, enhanced situational awareness with Surface Watch, visual approaches, map overlay on the HSI, and a lot more. 
For new installations, the G1000 and XI integrated flight deck is estimated to provide a weight savings of 250 pounds or more in King Air aircraft. Garmin says that King Air owners and operators with an existing G1000 integrated flight deck can easily upgrade to the G1000 and XI with minimal aircraft downtime. Deliveries are expected to begin in February, as the FAA has granted supplemental type certificate approval for the G1000 and XI in the King Air 200 and expects approval for the King Air 300 and 350 aircraft models within the coming weeks. EASA approval is expected later in 2017. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Limited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. We'll see you tomorrow.